Namaste and welcome to Tridevi Chumanda Mandir in Denver, Colorado. I'm Yamachit and I'm so glad you could join us this evening for part 10 of our series, The Twelve Kali's of the Krama Tantric Lineage. So tonight we're going to be honoring the 10th of our 12 Kali's, uh, Ma Kali uh, Narudra uh, Kali. And uh, I was hoping that this would be the first outdoor fire puja of the year, but unfortunately, and anyone who is uh, currently in Denver knows, we just have this horrible wind that uh, would not make uh, working outdoors uh, safe or comfortable. So my apologies for that, and hopefully uh, uh, next month we'll start doing outdoor fire pujas. A couple of announcements. So our uh, Tuesday satsang series on um, the meditations of the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra will be continuing 7 o'clock uh, here on YouTube or uh, in person at our temple. And then next Friday, uh, we'll be uh, hosting part three of our series of modern job practices uh, for the West. And the following Friday will be our monthly Devi Puja and Yoga Nidra. So again, welcome and namaste. Let's go ahead and bring up the materials for our satsang. And I'm gonna go ahead and pan the camera back down to our altar. Yeah. And yeah, we're at a good camera angle. So the 12, just to review, the 12 Kalis are honored in a thousand year old hymn called the Krama Stotram. And the hymn itself was attributed to the sage Abhinavagupta and it was part of the Krama lineage of non-dual Shaiva Tantra. This is the form of Tantra that first taught meditative techniques involving ra the raising of Kundalini energy upwards, piercing the chakras, raising consciousness from pure materialism to the transcendent divine, in other words, and this is the basis of Kriya Yoga. So to recap further from our previous satsangs, the sage Abhinavagupta, who was actually of the Trika Tantra lineage, and we did a series on that for our Tuesday satsangs, but he described three functions of divine consciousness, Isha Shakti, the power of will, Jnana Shakti, the power of knowledge, and Kriya Shakti, the power of action. And there's also a fourth function, the power of transcendence, personified by Kalasankarshini Kali. And she would be symbolized by the staff of the trident and those three functions as the three points on the trident. So these four divine functions are then multiplied by three phases of emission or creation, stasis, preservation, and reabsorption or destruction. Four times three is 12, therefore 12 in uh, number. And these phases can also be classified as the objective, the cognitive, and the subjective. And we are in that final phase, uh, this part of the series, uh, in the subjective phase. <coughs> so in our series thus far, we've honored first uh, Sristikali, associated with the creation of objects. The second was Raktikali, or the experience of objects with the five senses. This is related to preservation. The third, Siddhanasya Kali, termination of the experience of objects related to destruction. And the fourth, Yama Kali, personifies the power of transcendence. This ended the first cycle of objectivity. The fifth Kali, Samhara Kali, began the second phase, the cycle of cognition. 
and her position in this uh, state. Once again, it's creation only. Now the objects are both different from us, the observers, and at the same time, they are the same as us. So this phase represents um, the idea of duality being removed. The sixth Kali in the hymn, Mritu Kali, uh, represents the uh, state of preservation through the destruction of detrimental forces. The seventh Kali of the Stotra, Ma Rudra Kali, also known as Badra Kali, uh, is the destroyer of doubts and suspicions that hold us back on our journey to both self-actualization and divine consciousness. And the eighth Kali of the series, Ma Martananda Kali, this form of Kali, absorbs the energies of cognition, which are 12 in number into herself, and she's the transcendent force which ends the cycle of cognition. The ninth Kali of the Stotram, who we honored uh, last time, begins the cycle of subjectivity as Paramaka Kali, who personifies that state in which the limited ego, which holds those same 12 organs of cognition, is dissolved. And the goddess we'll be honoring tonight uh, Kala Anala Rudra Kali, also known as Kali Nirudra Kali, and both variations of her name um, will be stated, will be recited in uh, her corresponding verse that we'll be using as an invocation to her this evening. And for this form of Kali, the late Swami Lakshman Yu once wrote, Glory be to thee, O Ambika. And Ambika means either mother or compassionate. Glory be to thee, O Ambika, mother of the universe. By the power, your unimpeded will and time in the shape of Bhairava, that's the wrathful form of Shiva, thou createst the entire universe from the highest Shiva to the lowest insect. So in this state of Kala Anala Rudra, and I'll be using uh, that uh, variation of her name for uh, much of this presentation. Uh, just a second, I just need to make a slight computer adjustment. And uh, also those of you who are joining us tonight, please feel free to say hello using the chat function on the bottom right of your screen. So in Kala and Alarudra Kali, the dualistic perception of I versus that, uh, that form of thinking is dissolved along with the 12 sense organs, but the function of time is still existing. In other words, Kala and Alarudra Kali is also called Maha Kali. And she contains everything within herself, including time. Awareness of the integration of your own I with the collective at large. One translation of her name is destructive fire, which is also one of the epithets for the god Rudra, who's a, another wrathful form of the Lord, of Lord Shiva. Um, his name, Rudra, means howler or one who howls, and he's very much associated uh, with sacrificial fires. It can be um, implied that this form of Shiva is therefore the consort the, to which Kala and Nala Rudra Kali would be his Shakti. So if we break her name down further, Kala means time, anala means fire, bile, digestive juice, light, heat, and then the variant kaligni means fire of time. Rudra, as I mentioned before, means howler. So her name can be also translated to timeless fire howler, or the howling fire of time. 
And then her other name, Maha Kali, which means the great Kali, is the, the great mother Kali in all of her aspects. So in Kala Anala Rudra Kali, fire is an element of transformation. She's therefore associated with those sadhana practices where we assimilate and digest the toxins of our lives is kind of similar to cho practice. We're not uh, repressing them, we're storing them, but we're redirecting those energies toward a more harmonious manifestation in our lives. So it's taking the wound and turning it, not just healing it, but turning it into a strength. Fire is also an element of life and therefore the illumination of self, of self-knowledge. So understanding your deepest hurts informs you of who you are and the factors that have shaped you, but they're not all of who you are. So this Kali is the ecstatic assimilation of all our hurts, our traumas, abuses, that have sculpted our lives and the guide for our ability to move beyond those things while still recognizing the growth that we've accomplished, moving beyond those hurts, those woundings. And so again, a shift from victim to victor. I wanna talk a little bit about Mahakali's symbolism. And this is uh, one traditional image. And you'll notice that she has 10 faces, uh, 10, 10 arms. And she, in this form, represents all 10 of the Mahavidyas, the great wisdom goddesses that we honored during Navaratri uh, together. And you'll notice that each hand holds a different object. And each of those objects represents a different attribute of the different gods. So for example, here we see a trident associated with Lord Shiva, for example. I'm gonna go just through a few instruments that we see her typically holding. So she has uh, her sword or kadga, uh, which represents the cutting away of ego attachments and the severed head, which is what um, which represents those attachments. The trident, uh, that would be the principle of creation, maintenance, and destruction, or icha, uh, kriya, and uh, jnana shakti that I mentioned before. She's usually shown holding a club which is referred, which uh, is associated with the destruction of, uh, of ignorance, a conch shell associated with purification and also the outward spiraling of the universe. A small shield, which uh, um, refers to her protective aspect, a bow and arrow, uh, constant meditative concentration. So that's just a few of the objects that she holds. So in tonight's puja, uh, we're going to focus on the mantra of the Divine Mother Mahakali. And that mantra is Om Krim Kaleke Nama. And this is a mantra first used years ago while meditating on a cremation ground in Varanasi. And as with the other fire pujas that we've been uh, doing in this series, uh, we will also focus on the transformative nature of elemental fire. So I invite you at this point to make yourself comfortable, find a nice comfortable seated position where your back can be straight. A straight back chair would work or sitting on the, on the floor like I'm doing, maybe with a cushion under your hips. You could also do the meditative phase of this puja lying in Shavasana. But let's begin 
by closing our eyes for a moment, breathing deeply. And using the breath as a vehicle for clearing our minds, letting go of the cares and concerns of the day. <clears throat> Letting go of the worries of the past and the worries of the future. Bringing our attention to this present moment. And I invite you to think of a particular issue of your life that's ready to be healed or transformed. And you can take a moment to ask the Divine Mother for her assistance in that. And there's some people I'd also like to, rep, uh, to um, remember in our puja. That would include uh, Gail Hollinsby and the whole Hollinsby family. Our friend Achila, our friend Anoop and his family, Rafa and Susan and their children. Also like to uh, remember Katie uh, Byer B. Marshall. And I invite you to take a moment and think of somebody who's close to you as well to remember in our puja tonight. And then slowly bringing the palms of your hands together at your heart center. And we're going to open with the mantra, Ein Rim Klim, doing this in three breaths. So inhale. Uh, open your eyes. Om Shuklam Baradanam Vishnam Sishivanam Shutubjam Rasnavanam Dai at Salavadig Nata Santai Jaganesha Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshvara Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Sri Guru Venama J Guru Om Triambakam Yajamae Sagandim Pushtivardhanam 
Maha Kaliti Samja Samparamparya Kramodita Shad Satyakta Sambhava Param Nanda Nandini. She is called the Great Annihilator, Maha Kali, because she continuously perpetuates the stages of existence in an endless succession. Yet her true nature, which is beyond the categories of being and non-being, is the ecstatic delight of unimaginable bliss. Kalim Mahakalam Alam Grasantim Vande Hi Achintam Analabam Praise be to Mahakali who devours up the great cycles of time. She is inconceivable, indestructible, and unattainable. So we'll be using our mantra, Om Kareem Kalake Nama, as our puja mantra. Om Kareem Kalake Nama Om Kareem Om cream, Galake Nama Om cream galake nama Om cream galake nama Om cream galake nama Om cream Kalake Nama Om Cream Kalake Om Kapura Godam Karanavataram Samsara Saram Bujigendra Haram Sada Santam Rita Yaravinde Vivam Bivani Saitam Namami Devi Prapanote Hare Prasida Prasida Matara Jagata Kilasya Prasida Bishve Svara Pe Vishvam Vami Shura Devi Chachara Charasya Om Agni Jyotir Jyotiagnir Sva Agni Jyotir Jyotiagnir Sva Agni Jyotir Jyotiagnir Sva Invoke Kaligna Rudra Kali, a verse from the Kalik from the Kramastotram. Kala Karama Kranta Dinisa Chakra Krodi Kritanta Vidni Kalpaogra Kaligni Rudra Layamete Hasyam Tam nao mikala nala rudra kalim. We give reverence to the fearful Kali Narudra Kali, 
who creates her own collection of internal fires, where she overcomes temporal succession in the form of the previously digested sun wheel, the organs of perception. To this Kalanala Rudra Kali, in whom succession entirely dissolves, to her we bow. Jema. So we we'll make our fire offerings. Om Krim Galake Nama. 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 I invite you now to close your eyes and begin to breathe deeply. And let the power of the mantra guide your consciousness to where it needs to be. 
at this moment. Just rest in this state of awareness and just honor what manifests from a safe, non-attached distance. Now take a deep and clearing breath. And I invite you to find something within yourself that you're ready to let go of at this time so that it can be transformed. And let that thing that you're ready to let go of, envision it manifesting in the palm of your right hand. Just keep breathing and notice what shape it takes. It's shape, it's size, it's consistency. Now envision yourself walking up to a burning fire in a cremation ground. You watch as a corpse is being slowly consumed by the flames. And now imagine You are dropping this part of yourself that manifested in your hand into the fire. And just let yourself be aware of any changes in physical sensations that you might notice or any emotional feelings that may arise as your offering is consumed and being transformed.
I invite you now, slowly open your eyes and continue to look upon our fire here with a relaxed gaze. Just continue to observe and honor what that fire invokes for you. Begin to feel the transformed energies that came from what you offered to the fire earlier. Energies returning to you in the form of heat and light from the flame. And again, just let yourself be aware of and honor any changes that you might notice at this time on a physical level, or an emotional level, or even a spiritual level, as you gaze upon this flame and just meditate on its power.
And now listen to the words of the sage Abhinavagupta. A bound soul who has any of these convictions. I am dense. I am inert matter. Or I am completely bound by my karma. Or I am impure or I am the pawn of others. May seek to attain the steady conviction of the opposite of these views. If one succeeds in this, one immediately becomes the master whose body is the whole universe and whose soul is pure consciousness. In whatever manner such a conviction may be attained, a tantric yogi should cultivate it at all times. One should not allow one's perspective to become divorced from the real nature of things and thus be led into doubt by the mass of foolish teachings to be found in this world. Om Sana Vavatu Sana Bunatu Saviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadita Mastu Mavidvidyavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Sava Mangala Mangalye Shiva Svada Sadike Sadanye Trayambake Devi Nadiyane Namostute Om Shanti 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 Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Satsatoma Jay Ganesha Jay Guru Om Namah Shivaya Jay Ma Devi Jay Ma Kali Jay Ma Kali Gnarudra Kali Jay Ma Tadi Jay Ma Tadi Jay Ma Tadi I invite you now to bring the palms of your hands together at your heart center. Thanking the Divine Mother who resides both in, within and without. Recognizing that she's with you always to give you guidance. Giving gratitude to yourself for taking part in this practice this evening. Namaste. Blessings always. Jay Matadi. Thank you so very much. So I hope you have a wonderful evening, wonderful day ahead. Let yourself be mindful of some little subtle changes that may occur as part of taking part of taking part in this in this practice. Just appreciate them as they come along. Maybe handling a situation a little bit differently, or a flash of insight, or the knowledge that you need coming to you. 
I look forward to you joining me on Tuesday for our continued meditations from the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. Until then, namaste, jema, good night. <laughs>